What is up here is this Midnight Zero and welcome back to Let's Play Catherine. In the last episode, I don't actually remember super well, but I believe we finished up the fourth night or the fifth night. And there was, oh, that's right, there were a lot of ice blocks and such, and we had all those puzzles. And now we are in the stray sheep with a chance to talk to our friends. I do want to briefly say that I did actually record this episode once already, and the video got corrupted. So I am going through this a second time, but hopefully that'll streamline the process more so than anything. Let's get up and see who all is here. I did wait a little bit between recording the different episodes so as not to be too fresh and, and feel borderline bored with redundancy, but... <sighs> Let's talk to our friend Archie here. Oh, looks so good. Todd, my boss, is really annoying. As I'm sure you know. He's always telling stupid jokes. But even at work, he sticks up for my mistakes. Never asked him to do that. He's a kind man. He's so stupid, though. He doesn't even know that his wife's sleeping around with another man. The hell are you doing that? I'm horrible. I should just die. Yikes. I steal, I ruin things, throw them away, and run away. I'm incapable of love. Did something happen? Almost certainly. They're like, what? She left when I was in high school. She met another man. Maybe we're the same then. How? We both, we just wanted to love our mothers. Huh. Let's talk about something else. Don't be so nice to me or I'll just steal your girlfriend. Get away from me. I'm gonna leave. Yikes. So it talks about, you know, a potentially traumatic experience. And it's like, let's talk about something else. Then it's like, get away from me. I'm just going to be mean to you. I guess nothing much changes whether you're alive or dead. That's a uh, pretty concerning train of thought. What mail did we get? Oh, of course, it's Midnight Venus. The congratulations. We've completed stage five, the quadrangle, and three times the cool. You've earned five gold prizes above normal difficulty. Here's a stupendous present for you. You can now challenge the third stage of Babel, the Obelisk. Cool, so we'll have even more post-game content to work with. And it looks like, yeah, let's go see how Justin's doing. <clears throat> can I tell you the rest of yesterday's story? Be my guest. Yeah, sure, you're up for it. I think I was at the part where the ballerina suddenly had many enemies. She started to be harassed. Eventually, her entire family was killed. What? Yikes. She took her own life after that. That's the truth. Well, that's... That's certainly not the typical route that such a situation would take, right? He put the spotlight on this ballerina who arguably deserved the praise because of her performance, and as a result it led to so many enemies that it, well, became a overwhelmingly negative impact on her life, but it's tough to say that that's Justin's fault, right? So I would say it's not your fault. It's done, it's done. That's what everyone else Wait, says. what? <laughs> but it still won't bring her back. Have I told you about that legend? That if you survive, you'll be granted any one wish. It's just a rumor, right? It might be a ridiculous fairy tale, but right now, I feel like I've got to believe in something if I'm going to go on. If I'd never written that article, she'd still be alive. I know what my wish would be. I'd change the past, save her. I was such a fool. But that's why I'm hung up on this stupid legend. Go ahead and laugh if you like. It's not funny. Something really interesting and important in my opinion to distinguish here is you can be part of a, a causal sequence of events, right? You can be one of the causes of something happening, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's your fault that that happened, right? It's not like the responsibility falls entirely upon yourself, nor was the decision that led to that negative outcome necessarily even a bad decision in the moment. Also, as a quick aside, I swear between those two dialogues, they were, what's done is done and it's not your fault, and I chose it's not your fault, but then immediately after, Vince just said, what's done is done anyways, which is, you know, not, not, not appreciated, game. Anyways, we got a text message. We got a couple text messages. Eat your cake. Eat that piece of cake I gave you or it's going to get stale. I know we couldn't talk much yesterday. I've been busy with work and it's hard to make time. I might not be able to pick up the phone sometimes. I'll give you a call soon. Is that, you know, making an alibi or something? Sorry, I've been busy too. You surprised me when you came over so suddenly. Please don't come over without calling me beforehand. That's that's super sus and aggressive. I think we'll, we'll give her the benefit of the doubt and say we've been busy too. But I have something I need to talk to you about too. Hey, do you see any of your guy friends lately? That's also aggressive. Are you really busy all the time? Yeah, I don't want to come off as like accusational, right? So let's go with, but I have something that I need to talk to you about too. It's a little bit more direct, but again, 
we should really indicate what we want to talk about so as not to be, I don't know, make Catherine incredibly anxious. I'll tell you more later, or I need to think some more before I do, though. Um, but uh, we'll go with I'll tell you more later. I'm pretty tired, so I'll talk to you later, or I'll get in touch with you later. I don't see much of a difference between these two, honestly. I'll, I'll go with this one, so as to offer a reason for, I don't know, wanting to delay the talk that's not Catherine. So, uh, yeah, I think this works. Right. And now, here's Catherine with a C. We can see that type of message, right? We know what type of text we're going to be getting this time around. Some good medicine. Here's something that'll make you feel better. Well, is it working? Oh, sorry for sending that last one while you were at work. I hope I didn't get you in any trouble. Anyway, take care. Oh my! Can't look at this in public. No, you, you can't. This out somewhere where no one can see. Naturally. My alcohol tolerance is so high that I can't afford to get drunk anymore. That's a very sad situation to be in. You got mail. So we saw that there are a couple more people that have joined us. However, we are going to so that we can reply to that text message. Wait, no! I wanted to go in the stall, not in and out of the bathroom. We're gonna take a look at that picture briefly, and then we'll reply to that text message, and then we've also gotten a couple others, right? So, here's that- here's that image. Clearly, with the, uh, the healthcare theme this time around. <laughs> pretty- pretty tropey too, but... Let's see, how do we want to reply to this? I told you already, you can't keep doing this. This is crossing the line. Nice. nice. <laughs> no, I think we're gonna be a little bit more firm this time around. I told you already you can't keep doing this. Please stop sending me these pictures. Nah. These pictures are going to make things really complicated for me. Well, while that's true, that's a little bit too roundabout, I think, about its interpretation. No. Let's go with please stop sending me these pictures. <sighs> Pretty aggressive, but still. I'm wondering, hey, is it true that you have a tummy ache? You're not lying to me or hiding anything from me, are you? <sighs> Interesting. <laughs> we could reply with, I'm not lying, and as a result, lie. Nah. Don't doubt me. Does it matter? Well, it certainly matters. And to do this would be something, would, would be, I don't know, trivializing Catherine's concerns. No. We'll, we'll adamantly lie and say that we're not lying. I've been really tired lately. Nah. I want to be with you too. No, I've been really tired lately. Come on, cheer up. No. Or I can't help it if I'm sick. Come on, cheer up. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Hmm, I can't help it if I'm sick, I think? I don't know. Yeah, we'll go with it. Oh, that was a different effect than I had expected. Interesting. Very interesting. We'll come back to the bathroom in a bit, but for now, let's chat with our friends over here. It's you. What do you want? Daniel, don't be like that. You're awful kind to of Vincent. Why don't you hook up with him? I can't be with you, right? So everyone wins. Yeah, it's no use being with a man who will just become somebody else's. Uh, hey, hey, guys. Yikes. If you're gonna get hurt, then why did you bring this up? Do you have any idea how I feel when I buy my clothes? I have to save everything I make just to buy handbags and clothes that won't embarrass you when we're seen together. I studied economics and etiquette every day just so I wouldn't embarrass you at an important dinner. But it's all pointless, because no matter how much I better myself, it'll never be good enough for some people. Anna. It was inevitable that we'd break up from the beginning. <sighs> I'm sorry I never let you give me any presents. I had to do something to keep my dignity. <sighs> um, is that what you really want? Uh, this isn't about what we want or don't want. Well, that doesn't sound like a very healthy relationship, but that's very real, right? Anna experiencing those pressures from the, the gaze of her partner. Um, meaning she's forced to live up to some sort of expectation to meet some sort of image that's being impressed upon her. And at that point, is she even arguably herself in what's supposed to be the most personal relationship in in the world, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's what, it's certainly not what I would want, right? Maybe some people are able to thrive in such an environment more than I am, but I think your relationship with somebody 
with your partner should be the most free place you can be, right? Where you're really the most yourself. Maybe that's just naively optimistic of myself, but anyways. The relationship clearly not working out as intended. Oh, and it looks like we have a new friend here as well. And we got another text from Catherine, cool. Hey, did, did something happen? I hope I'm imagining things. Oh yeah, I'm meeting with a friend tomorrow, so if you want to call me dude in the afternoon. Aren't you busy with work too? Try to take it easy, okay? Of course you're meeting with a friend, aren't you? Sorry, it's nothing. Well, it's definitely not nothing, I wouldn't say that. Sorry, I'm just tired. Does it matter? Okay, we'll, we'll just say we're tired. Because... Because we are tired. <laughs> and I've definitely been there. Maybe it's because I'm drunk? Nah, I don't think so. It's okay though, or I'm really stressed out. I think being honest about that is helpful. You take it easy at work too. Well, good night. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this. Kind of like, a, we're both very busy, we're both very stressed, there's a lot of tension right now. Let's both try to relax a little bit. And reconnect, you know? Are you drinking? Hey, I've been waiting for you. What you got to say? I duty early today because of the incident. The victims are all men who are younger than me. I feel so bad for those young guys. When someone like me is still alive, do you believe in an afterlife? Wow, so that's a pretty deep question. Uh, personally, no. But I don't know which is going to be the better answer for Mr. Morgan right now, right? Um, I, w I mean, I'm going to go with no. Well, oh really? If there is an afterlife, that means that death isn't the end of everything, but I want there to be an end. I'm only living now because I have something I need to do. What's that? To find the criminal who shot my wife. And kill him with my own hands. My wife is dead, so he'll die. And then I'll die. That's when everything will finally disappear. Are you thinking of dying? Well, I'm certainly not good at living. Sorry, but I'm going home. I just came for a little drink before bed. Well, that's pretty sad. To be living just for the sake of revenge, right? At that point, even when you get the revenge, to think that that's literally the only thing such that when you actually execute that revenge, there's nothing else for you to live for. That's that's a very sad state. Is beer or water? I'm not even getting a buzz. Anyone else showing up? No, it looks like Lindsay and Martha left, though, unfortunately. Alright, well, in the meantime, we can talk to some of our friends here. Sorry, I need to take a whiz. What are they gonna say behind Toby's back? Hey, how's Toby doing at work? He's fine. I can trust him to customize a bike without watching over him. <laughs> you should spend more time tinkering with chicks, not bikes. He needs to hook up with somebody good for him. Someone besides Erica. You're so good to the little guy. How about sharing some of that love with us? Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't know that they worked together, actually. That's that's pretty neat. Yesterday, I told my mom about Erica. Uh huh? Wait, what? Yeah, I found the one. Um, you don't say. Well, uh, don't go overboard. Sure thing. <laughs> There's clearly a disconnect there, but yeah, it seems like Vincent's friends have a pretty tough time accepting their their relationship. Granted, there is certainly an age difference. Ooh, what what happened here? And looks like Daniel and Anna are leaving. Midnight Venus, the mysterious meter. Have you noticed the meter that appears when you make a choice or say something? It's pretty tough to not notice it at this point. Hard to miss, right? Vincent's values are always being tested. His state of mind can change the outcome of the plot. There are quite a few different endings. The inner monologue he hears when in a pinch will be affected too. Pay attention to what he's saying. Which is pretty neat. It definitely adds some replay value. Anyway, Catherine isn't cheating on you. Why are you even doubting her? Hmm. I mean, I believe in her, right? I don't actually think she's... Uh, if I had to choose, right? It's probably not her cheating. It's probably Catherine with a C cheating, if anything. And even then, it's likely that it's some sort of misunderstanding as opposed to Catherine with a K actually cheating. Believe her, but you're ignoring your own sins in the first place. But, but... And why don't you break up? Huh. Well, if you're cheating, <clears throat> you think she's cheating, that's the logical choice. Dude, don't just sit there getting angry. I'm not. 
sorry. I'm just tired. Everybody's pretty tired, but that's actually really interesting, right? Vincent's really coming to terms with how he's potentially making Catherine feel um, without even knowing it, or will make Catherine with a K feel, uh, by experiencing the shock of finding out that his own partner is potentially cheating, right? And experiencing that negativity, and it's forcing him to come to terms with needing to put an end to him making other people feel that way, right? And something else to talk about is, is it logical in that situation to break up? Probably. And an important mechanism for, I guess, understanding your own feelings about something can be how do you feel after a decision is made, right? We saw how Vincent reacted after Johnny suggested that logically breaking up makes the most sense. And I feel like if you have such a negative reaction to considering that possibility, it indicates there's at least some desire to stay in that relationship. And this is something I actually use occasionally when trying to make my own decisions, or with other people. For example, my brother and I, we, we play a lot of co-op games together, and there were two we were deciding between because he only wanted to pick up one. And he was like, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And, and I was like, all right, well, how about I'll decide? And he was like, sure. And so I was like, all right, let's play this game. And he was like, uh, okay, oh, all right, I guess. And I was like, all right, then we'll play the other one. And he was like, what? And I was like, clearly you were disappointed when I suggested that one, so we'll just play the other one. And he was like, oh. And so you can kind of use your own reaction, emotional reaction to certain outcomes to inform how you actually feel about that. So, a little, little tip, I guess. My head hurts. Maybe I've been playing too much Rapunzel. Hey, I got the top score on that right now. Once I figured out the trick, I got pretty far. You guys really like that game. You don't get why it's so fun, eh, Toby boy? Hey, that's mean. After I got the hang of it, it's just so addictive. Well, you're the kind of guy who won't give up till you beat it, huh? Well, isn't everyone like that? I mean, I'm definitely the completionist type. I definitely will, will push through all the way to the end unless it's very unreasonable or significant waste of time. I've had to get a little bit more stingy with my time lately, but yeah, I, I would definitely put myself in the I never give up category. Yeah. You took life one step at a time until you started dating Catherine, didn't you? Uh, shut up already. Anyone else at the bar? Doesn't look like it. So we'll chat with Orlando. It's a big talk now, but Erica had a lot of problems back in the day. Remember that time she was hurt by a relationship and disappeared? Huh? huh? What happened? <laughs> I remember that. You know, people were saying she was dead, but then she just popped up out of nowhere. I never knew Erica had some trauma like that in her past. But I'll fill every hole in her heart. I'll fill every hole in her heart. <laughs> I'm serious here. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> Oh, Orlando. <sighs> Sleepies. I think it's time to go home. <laughs> Sleepies. That's a cute little expression. Ah, it's late. Anyway, I have to set things straight tomorrow. Vincent, yeah. I'm going home now. All right. Well, uh, be careful then. We still have a few later. people to chat with. We'll see if Catherine shows up too. It's always a possibility. But otherwise, it's it's quite empty. So we'll chat with who's remaining. You, Johnny, and Orlando have all made women cry. Well, maybe I have. Maybe Orlando too, but not Johnny. Not true. He said he told his girlfriend that he has no intention of marrying her. How can a man tell a woman that? It's like saying, I don't love you. If that happened to me, I'd disappear all over again. Oh, Yikes. I remember that. He just up and vanished. Stop saying I vanished. I was crashing at a friend's place. I remember that you guys were all worried sick. Of course we were. We honestly thought you were dead. To be young and thoughtless can be forgiven. But if you're an adult... Stop tormenting yourself all over again. Interesting. For, for what it's worth, to offer a little bit of my own personal opinion on this, I'm not the type of person that fall into this category, but I do know that there are people out there who see dating or being in a relationship as not necessarily a stepping stone to finding a partner for, for life or for that next step like marriage, but instead as a way to elevate their own experience in the moment of life. Living life with a partner in a relationship might just be a more fun way of living for these people than being single, but it doesn't necessarily come with a lot of the responsibility or the, the foresight to attempt to find a partner going forward. And it may even be helpful to establish that early on, as this is a relationship that I'm enjoying life with, but it's not necessarily, 
I guess, founded on the intent to seriously find a partner for my next step. Maybe it evolves into that, but I don't know. Um, even if, I guess, you find somebody and you're confident they are not for that next step, if life is better with them than without them, it could arguably be unhealthy, depending on the relationship, but maybe it still makes sense to, if you want to enjoy life a little bit more and it is more fun um, in that relationship than without, to continue dating. I, I do think that's a bit more of a minority opinion, but I know that there are people out there who think that way. So you guys really need to learn how a girl's heart works. A girl is always hoping someone will come and sweep them away. I'd be more convinced if a woman was telling me this. Ahem, sounds like somebody wants to pay their tab right now. So, more on, more on that later. And when it comes to choosing a partner, the way men see things can't compare to the way women view it. I hear they even distinguish by smell, too. I wonder. I thought I was a sweet-scented middle-aged man. But Erica just said I have old man smell. <laughs> like I care. Yeah, anyway. As I was going to say, the hunter in relationships is actually the female. Female moose have males fight each other to win her courtship. When I saw that documentary last night, I was on the edge of tears for the poor husband. Maybe you can't be too careless for too long. Interesting. Women are hunting every day for better prey. If you take too long, you might be exchanged for the prey next to you, you know? Oh, so so I initially thought Boss was using the term hunter sort of like in the pair of hunter-gatherer and asserting that the hunters in the relationship may be the more assertive figure, the more active, uh, I guess physically, role in the relationship is that of the woman. But instead, he was actually making the analogy with, you know, uh, hunter in terms of like predator and prey relationships and that women prey on men uh, in order to, to, I guess, lure them into relationships or something. And now, continuing our coverage of the mysterious weakening deaths. Richard Davis, age 30, has been found dead today. 30? Wow. It's even younger than I am. That's scary. <sighs> That's all the updates we have on this story currently. After a commercial break, we'll bring you the weather. As always, if we have anything new to report. All right. Anyone else at the bar? I don't think so. All right, then you know there's one last thing we need to do, right? Get to wash our face and get ready to take on the night. Huh? Are we seeing things? Yep, this is an interesting one. I'll get you next time, lamb. <laughs> Tonight's stage is the clock tower. Quit wasting your time and come on over. What the? Clock Tower. Reminds me of the series, the, the horror game series. I watched a playthrough of the original on Super Nintendo. It was a very fun watch. I definitely need to play the games at some point. You're going home? Be really careful, okay? I I will be incredibly careful, Erica. I know. Don't you think that everyone's acting I don't know, strange lately? Not just you. I'm getting worried. Are you worried about those rumors? You shouldn't get yourself so worked up about that stuff. I don't believe in any of that. We'll see you. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the men at the Stray Sheep have problems with the women in their lives. A lot of the men at the Stray Sheep are having difficult times sleeping, seeing funny nightmares, enjoying Rapunzel. Look awfully similar to some of the sheep we see. You know Catherine, right? Maybe it's some other Catherine you know. Honestly, man. Surprised. She's always meeting new people for work. Alright, here we go. The sixth night. You're here. The clock tower is tonight's location. This clock has been in use since ancient times. What unique puzzles await us tonight? 
We will see. And we had a preview from the last night that this is going to be definitely a longer night with a few intermediate stages before the boss stage. From this point on, your skills will be tested by various puzzles. Bomb blocks are lit when you walk over them and will damage nearby blocks. Bomb blocks are definitely blocks that I'm not quite as comfortable with. So we'll see. Where am I this time? There's still more? Oh, there's always more, Vincent. There's always more. So you're gonna see how the bombs sort of blow up. They damage the nearby blocks. We're gonna... We're, oh, I was gonna say we'll spider there so that I don't actually activate the bomb. But I ended up activating the bomb anyway, so, you know, what can you do? Well, I guess I know exactly what you can do. You can intentionally not activate the bomb. So we're gonna try and hurry up and see if we can build this staircase pretty quickly so we don't lose our combo. And we're running out of time, but I think we'll make it in time. Awesome. And one of the things you'll notice about this stage and some of the other bomb block stages is you really have to be careful about where you place your blocks so that you don't, uh, if you want to try to avoid bomb blocks, you do so. So like moving over that block so as I can make a staircase without actually having to utilize the bomb blocks is really important. Now how do I want to do this? I can, um, I can do this and then just take advantage of, well I was going to say I could just like spider across but it's not necessary. Oh and that's a bomb block which is a little bit problematic. I can push that out of the way. Oh, but that won't even fall. Um, here's what we can do. I should be able to build if I bring this up like this. Now, the question is... I can get these coins pretty easily with that. And then I think I can actually just pull this out and we've already got a stairwell in place. Well, sort of. You gonna move? Alright, come on. I love the way he says that. Uh, how do I want to do this, though? I think if those fall, I should be okay. Maybe I can do this and those will fall. Oh, wait, no! I want those really badly. Hmm. Alright, we're gonna, we're gonna undo a little bit here. It sounded like the there was still a fuse going. So we can get this pillow in the meantime. <laughs> it's so funny every time. Let's see here. How is that going to impact the blocks? I think I really still need to do a similar action to what I had done before. Where I activate this and then push this out. Sort of like that. Oh, I think I just made the same mistake I did before. Yeah. So maybe instead what I need to do is if I push this block out like that, that'll fall, and then... Wait, no, that's not going to be incredibly helpful either. I am not exactly sure how I want to tackle this segment. How do I want to do this? It might be helpful just to do this in order to seal off that sheep. What I can do, actually, is not worry about it by doing that. Oh, wait, what? Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind, but... That's our... Oh, I just died. Oh, I did not just die. I was very close to just dying, though. So, we, we lost our combo there, unfortunately. We'll abuse the undo function briefly. So we can put this block over here, and I think this will allow me to climb up a bit better. Yeah. And what I can do is I can take advantage of the spider to come on over here and then I can grab those and I think I'm in the clear. Okay, that was complicated but manageable. So what I'm gonna do is push these to the side so that I can bring this whole thing down and now we should be able to climb up this. We got another one of these guys to deal with though. We've luckily blocked him off and that's something in general that's helpful. Whenever you climb up from one level to the next, if you immediately place a block right where you climbed up like that, you will cut off the other sheep from, from climbing up in that direction. Let's see, I should probably... I, I feel like 
Um, I feel like it might be more advantageous to. Can we? Can you not do that? Thanks. Maybe I should do this in order to get these coins. Hmm. I knew it. I knew it. I tried to hit undo, but it takes a while for what for those of you that are like, wait, why didn't you do anything? Um, it takes a while to actually have the animation play out of hitting the sheep, which is why I didn't end up doing anything in time there, which is really unfortunate. So we'll climb up again now. Uh, the these parts generally not too difficult, so we should be able to move along pretty nicely. And the other thing is, well, I didn't actually really need that dark block, so for the time being, we'll just avoid it in the interest of time. I'm trying to think of how I wanted to approach that part. I'm sure I could do this a little bit more optimally. Yeah, we're already back at the checkpoint, which is nice. This is what makes the most sense currently. You can use this to, to grab these guys. And then how do I want to do this on the side? Oh, that's right. This wasn't the tough part. I want to pull this out actually. And then come back up. And oh, that was potentially really bad. But we're living. Come on. Can you please move? Oh my god, these sheep. You're so annoying. We're gonna we're just gonna move that there so I don't have to worry about those guys at all anymore. So I think I can push this out of the way. And now what? Now what is the question? Wait, what? How did that happen? Oh, it must have, like, blown up one of the blocks or something. So I think if I do this, I can maybe make a stairwell up this way? I was like... That was not good. That was not good as well. Alright. Hmm. I think I could have made a better stairwell, actually. If instead I pulled this out like this, and then push that to the side, and then did that, and if I do that, I can then pull this block out, and I think I'll be okay. The real question will be, are the are the coins over here safe? And I believe, for the time being at least, they are, because I can spider over to them like this. Then I push this over that way, and I think I'm in the clear. Lovely. So then, while I'm here, I can push this to the side, this out like that, have everything drop a bit, and then, now that it's dropped, I can come up here. We need to get rid of these guys. They're so obnoxious. Alright, well, we've blocked off his path. I'm not going to activate that bomb. Okay, now if I pull this out, he should be pretty much stuck. So that was like a little bit of almost like competitive Catherine play for a bit. If I do that, yeah. So now that sheep will not be bothering us anytime soon. The real question is going to be, can I deal with this sheep? Because this one is the one that's been giving me the most trouble. Let's see, we can come up here. And and do what? If I pull this like that, that'll protect me in that regard, but but I'm still oh, that was not what I wanted to happen. Because that crack block the the cracked block broke, which was pretty problematic. I think I can actually make a little stairwell here, like this. 
but I still want to get those coins. Pause. Sorry for the interruption. It's uh, more difficult than more. than expected sometimes to right, I got it. have the ability to record. We are, are we going to be able to get that? You know what? I think we are, but it's going to require some some creative maneuvering, I guess. Right, I got it. So now that I've got that, I can stairwell up this way. And once I've done that, I can pull this out. I think. Hmm. I can pull this out like this. And then we're actually going to fall a lot and pick up that item here. And we can actually use this item to climb back up and make progress. Nice. You guys see that? Oh wait, what? No, I hit the wrong button. I wanted to pause. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do this to reset our, our combo meter. But yeah, so we can do this and then we can basically make it back just in time. I think that was called the, the Geronimo, right? That's what they said? But this is what the energy drink does. It allows you to climb really fast and really effectively, but it's also easy to get, you know, carried away while you're using it, so definitely use it with caution. So, yeah, now we're back to normal. How do I want to get up past this? I think if I push this out, I'll be all right. Yep. All right, we got ourselves a nice perfect combo. I'm glad it's entertaining, Mysterious Voice. I hope it's entertaining for everybody watching now, too. And so here we are at the first landing of the clock tower. Pretty interesting dynamic. I will say, though, even though this episode is actually going to be a little bit short, due to the external forces governing my ability to record, I am going to have to end the episode here. So in the next episode, we're going to see what all of the sheep have to say at the landing. It looks like, well... One of our friends doesn't seem to be here, unfortunately. But yeah, that and we have a couple interesting questions coming ahead and a long night of some supposedly very challenging puzzles. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that and seeing how the story continues to develop as Vincent uh, gets closer and closer to determining his resolve and deciding on what he wants to do with his future. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.